to Pentecost 2020 here at Penningham. Uh, the liturgical colour for the season is red. Even the tree there as well, so some harmony between me and my tree. Uh, that was Elgar playing as well. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. A good track to listen to. I hope this finds you well. We'll begin our Pentecost service by offering our opening Pentecost collect. So let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening the way of life eternal to every race and nation. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Bible reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 2, the first 14 verses. The coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Let's hear then the word of God. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language, and they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them all proclaiming the mighty works of God in our own tongues. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. Amen, and thanks be to God for the reading of his word. May he grant us understanding. Well, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in God's sight through Christ our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, open your Bible at home at Acts chapter 2 and we'll think of this great theme of Pentecost and I'm only going to make two remarks. A word on us and a word on God. Let's begin. A word on us. Verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. They were all together in one place. Eugene Peterson, the American minister who I uh, read a lot of his books, says this, many people make a mistake by thinking that the practice of our faith is about being polite before God and maybe being polite before one another. They don't know how to be polite before God. What kind of words might we use if we were trying to be polite before God with some understanding of what it is to be polite before each other but how can I be polite uh, before God? And he says well that's completely wrong of course because the essence of the faith is not being polite before God but being honest before God. So this word on us from verse 1 is just that. Let's be honest uh, before God with verse 1. The day of Pentecost arrived, and they were all together in one place. 
they were together. So let's deal with the elephant in the room before we think of the miraculous signs when the Holy Spirit came on that day. We are not together. Now I know that some people will say, well, we're together in spirit. Paul could say that. Yes, he could. But he always desired to be together physically. Some might say, well, you know, we're together over modern technology. Who's more technological than God? And yet he chose not to be with us through simply the technology of a, a message on paper, but as Pentecost shows, by actually being with us in person. And of course that's the incarnation as well. Christ being physically with us. That's his name, Emmanuel. God is with us. And not with us simply over Zoom or uh, Facebook or YouTube or Teams or any of the other nice programs that we use to keep in touch, but to be physically with us. And so let's be honest before God. I don't want to celebrate another Pentecost like this. Please, Lord, not another one like this. Well, he, he might have different ideas. I hope not, though. I hope I never have to celebrate another Pentecost uh, like this. And so the word on us is quite simply this. It's okay to have a lament this Pentecost. It's okay to not feel like you're swinging from the lights this Pentecost because God speaks not only in the heights of ecstatic joy but in the depths of concern and even heartache and despair. One more word on us before we turn to these wonderful gifts. Some might be thinking, but isn't this real church over the computer? I mean, isn't this as good, if not better? Well, I know we have some people at Penningham who would quite simply prefer possibly to just have church at the edge of their computer screen and never actually get out of their beds to come to church and meet with the believers. But I want you to know this. It hurts me. When you feel you don't need me physically with you in order to worship God. It hurts me to think you don't need me or anyone else physically with you in order to just have a wonderful time with God. Because you've got your computer and you can tune in to something much better than what you would find at your local parish church. Because when you're with me physically... It actually does help me worship God. So I'm not going to offend you by saying, I don't need you. So don't offend me by saying you don't need me. They were together in one place. And their worship was the better, the richer and the purer because of it. A word on us. The elephant in the room dealt with. Secondly now, a word on God. Verses 2 to 14. So I can assure you that from this point on, we will always have an online presence, and probably a more prominent online presence than we've ever had up until this point. But the online presence will always at best be a supplement for the real presence, which is physical, in space and in time. So yes, I will have an online presence, but it will not be a replacement for the physical presence. But the word on God comes in these three wonderful signs. Let's take the first one. You see it from verse 2. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. What does the wind tell us? What's the, the meaning of that sign, wind? Well, wind and breath in the scripture often denotes God's Holy Spirit. But still, what does that tell us? We know it's the Holy Spirit because elsewhere in the passage we're told it's the Spirit. But what does the wind mean? Well, think about the wind out there. Can you control the wind? Is the wind at your disposal? 
The wind is not even at the disposal of the Met Office. At best they can work out where the wind is coming from, what it will do when it gets here and where it might go once it leaves. Even that is not guaranteed. No, we don't have the wind at our mercy. We are at the mercy of the wind. Or well, let's use another word. Sovereign. The wind is sovereign. We don't control it. God's Holy Spirit shows us that the Lord is sovereign. And we don't control him any more than we can control the weather. He's in control. The first thing they can discern when the wind enters a house and fills the place is God is in control. Ironic because a huge wind might seem like an event out of control, but if they knew the scripture, and I'm sure they did, then the chaos of the wind actually said something very different. It didn't say, this is a mess, it's chaotic, it's out of control. It said, no, God is in control and he has his hand over the situation. So this Pentecost Sunday, let's ask ourselves this word on God, will we worship a sovereign God? Will we worship a sovereign God on Pentecost 2020? A God who has, in his providence, orchestrated this virus. Or will we worship a lame duck who's cowering behind the safety of the blankets of heaven, maybe weeping for these poor humans that he would love to dig out of a hole but has no idea how. I would pity that God. I wouldn't worship that God. I'd help that God out if I could because it certainly sounds like he could do with help even from a pitiful creature like me. We don't worship that God as Christians. We worship a sovereign God in whose counsel we walk this path at this time. It appears chaotic to us. The noise roaring all around, but let's remind ourselves, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church, the word he gave them was sovereignty. The Lord's in control. Now that same Holy Spirit who is in control can be in our lives in the midst of the confusion. Like a rock, like an anchor, the wind, God's sovereignty. Do you worship a sovereign God this Pentecost? I hope so. The second word on God from the fire and the word is pure let's take verse 3 and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them well in the scripture fire denotes different aspects of the Christian's life there is obviously the fire of judgment there is fearfully the fire of damnation that we need not worry about as believers in Jesus there is also the fire of purification, the refiner's fire. And in this sense, I think, this is why we see the flames of fire resting upon the disciples, showing them that the God they worship is not only a sovereign God, but he is altogether pure, righteous, holy. To have him in your life is to have one that you can trust completely. Were you really surprised about that drive to Barnard Castle? Were you really surprised? And before we think, well, that's just the way that party is. I remember they had another party in power not so long ago who were convinced that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And there's another party, very small, at Westminster, and they don't even know how many genders there are. Are you really surprised about the weakness of human leadership? St Paul tells us to pray for these leaders and he doesn't say in 1 Timothy chapter 2 when he's asking us to pray for them, just give thanks for them because actually they're really, really good folk and you'll never need to worry 
There'll be nobody purer, nobody more sovereign, nobody wiser, nobody cleaner. He says when we have to pray for them, we have to pray for them. Not just thanksgiving, but actually intercession, that the Lord would guide them. That he would encourage them where they need encouraged and they need restrained. And sometimes even stopped. But this second sign of the Holy Spirit shows us, not with the Lord. When you have the Holy Spirit filling you in your Christian walk, you have the Lord with you and he is altogether pure. His word and his promise can always be trusted. Are you worshipping a pure understanding of God this Pentecost? Really trusting his promises? One of those promises is that all things work together for good for those who love God. All things. What even this thing that's happening to us, even now. Well, I imagine that fits into the category of all things, doesn't it? So our God is sovereign and our God is pure. We see this in the wind and we see it in the flame. And then we see the third sign on the day of Pentecost, the miraculous languages that they're able to speak. Third and last word on God, love. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Then we hear of the crowd who hear the languages from different parts of the world and yet they understand the apostles. They accuse them for being drunk. And then Peter stands up, verse 14, and addresses the crowd. Listen to my words. They understood what was being said. Now why is that then the word love? Is it not loving to want to be understood? Is it not loving to communicate in such a way that the other person would actually understand? It's unloving when we hide the truth. It's unloving when we cover it up with double speak and create so much wriggle room that our words mean nothing. But that's not the way God's word operates. It's clear and it's understandable. He wanted them to know who Jesus was. He wanted them to know they could receive Jesus. He wanted them to know they could have their past, present and future sins forgiven, be filled with his spirit and live a life pleasing to him. The third sign of the languages shows us that the God we worship is a God of love. The wind shows he is a God who is sovereign. The fire shows he is a God who is pure. And them meeting together in that upper room shows that he is a God who loves fellowship with his people. And his people desire fellowship not only with him, but with one another. So let's ask for the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit this Pentecost, that we would know afresh these great promises, and pray for the day when we are once more together in the room. Amen, and thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fixing.
Let's pray. Gracious Lord, on this Pentecost Sunday, we thank you for the sending of the Holy Spirit, sending him into our lives at your appointed time, turning us from our old life and carrying us into the kingdom of your Son. Strengthen our walk, we pray, in these days. Draw us closer to yourself until the day when we can once more be close with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who at this time are struggling with loss, with health, with the prospects of an uncertain future. Lay your hand upon them. Bring comfort where it's needed and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, we pray, and for its leaders. O oh Lord, guide them, give them wisdom, but also restrain them from exercises and practices which would be destructive, not just for them, but for us all. Lead them by your kindly light, that they would be able to promote the good, all in common grace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And in the silence now we pray for those concerns known only to us.
O holy God, who came in the wind and in the fire and in the tongues, come afresh over your people, we pray. And hear this prayer in the words Jesus commended us to unite offering. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.